That's the DW Stadium. This is Touchline. Hello and welcome to Super League Touchline. George Riley's still away cavorting at the Euros, so you're stuck with me, I'm afraid. I think they've asked him to hang on for a few days and sort out the economic crisis. He's some guy. We're at the home of the league leaders ahead of their clash with the Bulls, but first up, a little bit of this. We find out who's the fastest man in rugby league. There's the top five tries from round 18. Danny Orr and Ryan Hudson show off their coaching skills. And as Wigan celebrate their second annual Heritage Day, we look ahead to the Warriors versus the Bills here on Friday night. But first, here's this week's headlines. Four-time Super League champions Bradford Bills have filed for administration following the receipt of a winding-up order from the HMRC. Bills requested further time to seek investment, but funds were not forthcoming, so the move into administration was inevitable. England captain and Super League stalwart Jamie Peacock has announced his immediate retirement from international competition. The Leeds forward has won every honour in the domestic game and was recently awarded an MBE for services to rugby league in the Queen's New Year's honours list. Um, I, I did a lot of thinking in January and, and obviously met with Steve McNamara and we, and we had a long chat and I thought, now would be the right time to retire if we beat the Exiles and um, that's happened and obviously I've gone on and, and gone through with the plans and retired. Castleford Tigers marquee player Rangi Chase has been suspended on full pay by the club following an undisclosed incident over the last weekend. The cast standoff was a noticeable absentee from the squad on Sunday's clash with Leeds Rhinos which saw the Tigers go down 40 points to 22. In a club statement, Tiger stated that the incident would be fully investigated before any decision is taken and there would be no further comments made until that point. With 30 years of playing experience between them, Castleford stars Danny Orr and Ryan Hudson have got a list of credentials as long as my arm. They decided they wanted to share that knowledge and so set up the Elite Rugby Academy. in six weeks now and uh, Danny and I have uh, managed to launch the academy. Uh, we've had over 100, 100 kids so we've decided to launch on a Monday night. Uh, the demand's been really good so uh, it's good, it's great seeing the kids, the kids out and uh, being, being active. Kids love it. It's um, it's just about getting kids involved in rugby and, and enjoying themselves and having fun, and um, you know, learning a few skills along the way. And you know, the turnout's been you know we didn't expect anything like it. So um, yeah, the kids are always having fun and they keep coming back for more. Kids have never played the game before. We've got a three-year-old kid running around with a, with a two-hand carry, which is great. You know, great to see. I'm sure Basil will be wanting to sign him up, but uh, it's, it's all about fun. And I think if, if the kids can attach uh, the fun aspect to it, and obviously as they're progressing, like we're going for the next two, we're up to you know tens, elevens, twelves. You know, we can modify it and, and advance to to the certain age groups. But the confidence of the kids and uh, the skill levels have improved drastically in the last six weeks. In this area Castle, it's renowned for, for its rugby and in recent years a lot of the clubs have folded. Um, so there's a lot of kids out there who, who haven't experienced playing rugby as you know myself did as, as, as a young lad and, and Ryan. So we just want to get kids, um, get them out and get them active, get them playing rugby. And there's too many kids sat inside playing on the Playstations and Xboxes and um, this was our way of doing it. And um, the, you know it, it has shown that, that there's, um, there's plenty of kids out there who want to play rugby. And if we can push them towards amateur, amateur teams then you know that, that's what we want to do. We want to get kids involved and um, you know hopefully make some you know future Castle Tigers play.
it's great, you know, it's, it's there's nothing better than seeing the kids smiling, running around and, uh, you know, enjoying the game. To be fair, they are only young, you know, and, and you expect you expect them to um, not to pick everything up straight away, but they're having fun and, and they're doing things with smiles on their faces and that's what it's about. So, um, again, they keep coming back, so obviously we must be doing something right. Right, it's time for the top five. Here's the top five tries from the weekend. In our opinion, the best opinion. At number five, Luke George does it all by himself off the back of a scrum. And even some desperate clawing of his actual back wasn't enough to prevent a 60 metre try. Keith Lulia is at number four. Nice side step, sets him on his way, leading to a quick slap in the face, a pirouette, and he's down. Ryan Hall eventually scores a great team effort try at number three, offload after offload here. Goes for a little bit of a wonder. For a bit of a one-two, finishing in a basketball pass, and he's down. Willie Manu is at number two. A little bit of juggling pays off. Some sharp offloading eventually leads to a 35 meter sprint for Tom Briscoe. Finishes with a nice pass. And the top try from the weekend is eventually scored by Callum Watkins. But he does owe a little bit of credit to Zach Hardacre, who sidesteps wrong foot, as well as a little palm off before eventually passing at the real scales in the try. There you go, there's some absolute crackers as per usual. By the way, if you disagree with any of our selections, tough, it's not a democracy, we decide. No, do feel free to contact us with your suggestions. We might even give them a quick look. And a quick look was all anyone got at Headingley on Tuesday, where Rugby League's fastest man competition took place. Salford's Jody Broughton was crowned champ last season. But who'd be this year's speed king? Through the race, then you know, did you do you feel like you were going well when you got to the halfway line? Got yeah, got to my start's not my best. You know, I take a little while to build up. Got to about 50 meters, and uh, I could start to feel the people falling away. And I knew Jamal was next to me, and uh, just opened up my legs, and I just beat him by, I think, by a nose or something. So, no, it's buzzing, absolutely buzzing. Poor Thierry left for dead. Oh, well, I didn't even see him. Didn't see him. <laughs> You know, what a trophy. It's going to take pride of place in your mantelpiece. Yeah, you can move all the photos out of the way. This is on top now. This is in the middle. Yeah. How does that sound as well, Super League's fastest man? Yeah, it's a good rep to have, so uh, hopefully I can keep up with it, play a few games this year and use that pace. <laughs> Come back and defend it next year? I like to think so, yeah. I hope so. Now my name's on the trophy. I mean, it'd be wrong not to. Now, Friday's visit of the Bradford Bulls here also sees Wigan host their second annual Heritage Day as the club celebrates its illustrious history. And what a history it's been.
Wigan especially have got a very strong history and a lot of, a lot of fantastic players have, have put on the jersey and been a part of the club. So, yeah, I'm sure seeing this kind of stuff around here, it's, it, it makes players want to emulate that and, and try and be part of it as well. I mean, I, I was very fortunate, played in a cracking team uh, from uh, 84 to 92. On, uh, we, you know, we had some very, very good wins, uh, but things were cyclical and Wigan had a downturn uh, in the 90s, but they seem to be getting back up there now and uh, they're coming strong you know, very quickly. Uh, obviously, it's a club close to my heart and it, it'll be a fantastic day this Friday and Saturday for Sean O'Loughlin's day as well, Testimonial Day. Um, he's got the makings of a great weekend, I'm looking forward to it and um, obviously we need a good win on, on Friday against Bradford. Sean Wen is doing an absolutely fantastic job with them. Um, I don't know what he's feeding them, but it's definitely working. The team camaraderie there is so, so strong. And that's what it's all about. When you know, when you say a lad's A on the pitch, and the chips are down, uh, if you can rely on your teammate, it makes a lot of difference. The, the squad at the start of the year, the team at the start of the year, was, was, was going well, but we've also had a lot of injuries where some of the young boys have had to, had to come in on short notice, do a few weeks, and they've, they've done great jobs for us. So it's, it's not just been about that. At one to seventeen, it's been about probably the blokes who have been up there, the twenties to thirties as well. They've they've been doing a great a great job for us when they've come in, and yeah, there's, there's still a long time left in the in the league, but we're confident we can we can keep up our form and, and keep up the performances we've been doing, and hopefully that will result in playing in finals. I've heard it mentioned in the past that you know the the, the history can bog players down with the pressure, and, and I, I think that's absolute rubbish. And I, I I want our players to know that we've won more trophies than anybody else. This is the most famous club in the world and, and, and they're making their own history. In, and it's really important to me that our players know that and I'm forever making sure that it's in the, it's in the, the books what they get from us. All the history of everything, what we've won and who's played for it in, in the past. and it, It's proud of the club. They should, they should be proud of it and, and they're proud of it. Bradford obviously uh, just gone into administration today. It's an uncertain time for them. Does that sort of shake your head a bit before the, before the game on Friday? Um, I don't think it, it won't affect us too much. We'll probably just, just concentrate on our game. And, and sure, for, for the Bradford players, it's, it's not the best of circumstances and not knowing what the, the future is going to be and that kind of stuff. But I'm sure they'll probably try and use that to probably unite them a little bit and just, just try to concentrate on what they do on the field as what, what's going on away from, the, away from them is pretty much out of their control. So I think for them, they'll just try to concentrate on and putting in performance here on Friday. It definitely won't affect my, my players. You know, it's a, it's a team who turned up, they're, they're in Super League, they'll be, they'll be very good. And if we're not enthusiastic, you know, it'll be a tough day at the office. So we need to make sure that we, we're very ruthless in our, in our approach to this game. It's a, it's a real big one for us. I'm, I'm desperate to get two points out of this game. I want a real good performance and make sure that we're going to the week after against Wakefield in a good frame of mind. In, and everything we've got with our D, you know, we've been really intense. But our attack, I just want to make sure our skill level is perfect. Well, that's about all we've got time for. Just a quick reminder, however, to subscribe to SLTV. It's completely free. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest videos. We'll see you soon. It's completely free. It's free. Sign up. Go and sign up now. See you in a bit. It's finished, the show's finished. Go and, go and click on the subscribe to it because it's completely free and it's got all the latest videos. Catch, catch in a bit. It's free, it's absolutely free. Go in. There's nobody here. There's no one here, so just go in. Show's finished. There's no, there's no one, they've all gone. Go and sign on, it's absolutely free.